Hello, everyone. I am Sam Ekman of Gold Derby, and I am very excited to be here with Peter McDesey of the new movie Uncle Frank from Amazon. And, you know, Peter Allen Ball wrote and directed this film. Uh, and I assume as his partner, he wrote the part for you. Maybe I'm mistaken there, but I would assume it's for you. So I'm wondering, what was your first impression of the script when, when you first saw it? Well, I remember when he first presented it to me just as a script he had written, I was like sort of, I just cried my eyes out. Uh, uh, I remember feeling very, very emotional and that's just on paper. It felt very emotional uh, to me and uh, I read it again and I cried again. Uh, it was very heartfelt. That's, that's exactly what I remembered. And I remember that, you know, he got this nuances of the Southern family and the Southern ways of being. Plus Wally was like something very interesting that he came up with. I thought it was very interesting that he was Muslim. He was from a different country. He was an immigrant. It was in the seventies where it's like to be gay as a Muslim gay man from Saudi Arabia of all places, living in New York, uh, you know, all of that. I thought he encompassed the whole thing in a very deft and astute way. Mm -hmm. yeah. And your character Wally, um he's sort of he comes onto the scene in the movie and he's like a breath of fresh air I think exactly. it's really rare to see a character who is you know Muslim and gay especially at this time as you said who has sort of also even rarer to see someone who's reconciled those two aspects of their identity together exactly. so what did that mean for you to tackle that well, I mean, I thought it was very, very interesting to just uh, have uh, an immigrant character first, uh, second, a Muslim character, which was very interesting. And as you said, a Muslim who's gay and that both could coexist. And I love that small little, little scene in the movie where we see him praying, where Sophia's mm -hmm. character sees him praying. And I thought, wow, that was just enough to convey that he could reconcile his religion with his sexual preference. And the fact that it was in the 70s, it was in New York and the relationship between the United States and Saudi Arabia at that time. And I thought all in all, he did it in a very, very smart way. I mean, he was, I think he was the, maybe the only character in the movie where he knew himself very well, if you really think. I mean, he was the most generous, the kindest, and it's the character that knew himself the most, in my opinion. Yeah. 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 And it was very interesting to me because I had not played such characters at all before. I was always being cast, uh, you know, for roles that are more intense and, and more devious maybe sometimes and tormented, traumatized. And I remember asking him, like, where is this trauma? What's his trauma? What's his trauma? <laughs> <laughs> and it's just like sometimes, you know, there are characters who are not traumatized and that's okay, you know? Uh, so that was kind of new and and refreshing for me as an actor. Yeah. Well, it, it struck me as interesting because a lot of this movie is about trauma. Um, right. <laughs> and even like Frank, uh, Paul Bettany's character is intensely traumatized by his familial yeah. relations. Um, but Wally too, I would say, you know, his mother doesn't know fully about his life maybe. And uh, it's there's maybe trauma there and maybe more pressure perhaps in society than even Frank has. And yet Wally has such a strong sense of self. Where do you think that comes from for him? I do think it comes from his upbringing and his religion actually. He, Wally used his religion to have faith in life and in himself. He really used religion for what it's there for. And that is to provide a sense of security and a sense of faith for us as people, no matter what your religion is. Mm -hmm. And I think that's what uh, part of his strength comes from. It's, it's from that and his upbringing. And I love, love, love the fact that he has this phone conversation with his mom. And we see that he is so close to his mom, but closeness is not interpreted what we have in this society, specifically mm -hmm. that they have to know everything about you and you have to know everything about them. I could still have a very close and loving relationship with you. I mean, he knew what the limitations were. He just knew what it is like. It's something that could not be surpassed at this point of time. And uh, he, I mean, I think he's super smart in so many ways and he tackled his life in a very, very nice way. I don't think it's trauma, but I think there is, maybe there were some missing things in his life, mm -hmm. but I don't think he was traumatized per se, the same way Frank was obviously, yeah. And your character is 
he pops off the screen because there's you spend a lot of time with Paul Bettany and Sophia Lillis and uh, you know Paul playing Frank he is obviously we talked about very traumatized Sophia's character uh, Beth is very sort of inward and observer but Wally is so exuberant and so positive is it difficult kind of keeping up that energy when other people other characters around you in a scene are a little more subdued maybe uh, you know, as an actor, somebody gave me this advice, and I think it's fantastic, is that don't pick up on the energy that the other actors bring, basically, and and that's what I did, meaning like, so Paul was completely in his own world, as, as, and I shouldn't get sucked into it. I had my own trajectory and my own wants and dreams, uh, you know, in my role. So that was what I worked on. It was it was fun. I mean, I had so much fun with Sophia. I mean, we were playing like up the gazoo, and and it was it was so much fun to to play with her and with Paul. You know, it was interesting that the relationship between Wally and Frank uh, sort of seeped into the relationship between Peter and Paul. And 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 I love that because that's how it should be. So it was, you know, a bit tense at the same time, um, close and compassionate. You know, I don't know if I'm making sense, but yes. but I do remember that being the case while shooting this movie. And uh, and I love that I was the exuberant one and uh, uh, and, you know, ice cream and and, you know, go, let's check the south out. And yeah. everything was such a joy and such a gift from life. You know, I think we do. Everybody needs a Wally, uh, I do think, because to make life sort of more palatable is just we need to look at the positive uh, at the positive part of it. And Wally does that very, very, very well. I've learned from Wally myself, you know, it's just you learn from him to just appreciate the little things. And that, that's great. That was great. Yeah, I love that he keeps that attitude too, even when they take the trip home to the family and he's surrounded by people that are, you know, vastly, vastly different from him and you still keep <laughs> that positive yeah, attitude around that whole group. Exactly. I mean, to him, they, he, I mean, he is exotic to them, but they definitely are exotic to him as well, you know? And he sort of, like, that did not deter him in any way, shape, or form. He just went for it. Mike, he goes, and oh my God, there was so much about it. And wow, it's so like, I mean, watching him, it was like, I can't believe I did that because it, it's really a force of nature. He was really a force of nature. And 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 I love that. I love that about him, you know? Mm -hmm. And... <laughs> For, for you and Paul Bettany, the, their relationship, they've been together for, I think they say 10 years in the film, but given the time period and sort of family limitations, in many places they would have to be closeted. So their world is sort of very, very close that, you know, in that house, it would have been very close. And you really buy that the two of you have this longstanding history together. What did the two of you have to do, if anything, to, to create that sense together? Um, well, I mean, we did it separately. We didn't do it together. Everybody did their own homework, each one of us. And, uh, you know, so I had to work with the fact, you know, that he's Muslim, he's in this country, he's in New York, it's in the 70s. He sees this man, he falls in love with him, he wants it to work, he can't tell his mom what it's what it's like to be that way, you know, like what, 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 uh, like you open the door, you're a different person at that time, you know, you had to be careful. I mean, you, you know, like when the car breaks down or when he follows them, I think, yeah, when he follows them, you know, we have this little scene and, you know, actually both of us, both Paul and I, I think we did it separately without even checking with each other. It's like every time we say something, we look around to see if anybody's around watching us. Like you had to look behind your back and make sure that you're safe, that nobody's there to see mm -hmm. what you're doing, even though it was only talking to the person. So I imagine that their life was very constricted. It was filled with love, but it was very constricted. It was restricted to just having parties at the house, at their house. So they had like a bunch of friends that was a close knit, uh, you know. Uh, mm -hmm. So, you know, all of, you had to take into consideration all of these things. As well as you know the fact that he Wally had to put up with Frank a lot. Yeah. I mean, you know, to put up with an addict, living <laughs> with an addict is not like a joy ride. <laughs> and uh, and I love the, the I think it's Paul's favorite too. It's favorite scene is uh, the hallway scene where he goes, you know what, uh, Frank, I could just smell the alcohol, and I'm not gonna put up with this anymore. We've been you know we've danced this dance before, and enough, you know. And I love that because you really saw. The history of these two characters together 
and yeah. you know he did his homework i did mine it worked out and that's great yeah you know <laughs> i also uh i wondered what the dynamic was like having um Sophia there with you too, and working alongside a, a much younger actor, um, because I, I I wondered if it sort of mirrored the the sort of vibe in the the actual script of these two men who end up kind of taking care of and taking charge of this girl, despite her being very mature. I think it was great. I mean, I think it was great as an actress and as a character because it sort of diffused the tension. It is, you know, there was this young girl watching these two gay men and watching something very new to her. And at the same time, she provided a, a, a relief of the tension that that uh, was happening between Frank and Wally, despite the love, despite everything, there was still like tension underneath that that I could feel. And she was like sort of the the one that broke that in a way. And Wally tells her, why don't you, um, you know, why don't you drive with me? I'll, I'll drive you. Why don't you jump in my car and, and we'll take the trip together? Because he wanted that and he wanted to know about Frank more. I mean, despite the fact that they had been together for 10 years, he knows no one from his family. I mean, could you just imagine? Like no one. He never met, he never met anyone. And he was dying. He was, yes, we're going to go. We want to go because Wally wanted to live vicariously through Frank's family because he could not be fully himself with his family. Yeah. Does that make sense? Yeah. Um, and this, you know, working alongside Alan, you, some people can really love collaborating with their partners. Other people have to keep that very separate. So, but you have to have worked together on many projects. And so I'm wondering what, uh, what that dynamic is like for, for you working together as, you know, director and actor. Well, uh, yeah, I mean, I'm a producer too on the movie. Uh, so that changes the balance a little bit as well as here and now, uh, which was a TV show yeah. for, uh, for HBO and other things as well, I can't remember. But I had worked with him as an actor, absolutely. Uh, you know, it, it's not uh, always the easiest thing to do, but when it's done properly, it could be magical. Mm -hmm. That's what I would say. But you have to be aware of the pitfalls. You have to retain a certain respect. You have to separate the professional from the personal. And there has to be a ton of trust, I think. And that's what makes it work. And it has worked pretty much pretty well I think you know yeah. what first uh what first led you to venture into producing uh the scarcity of roles that I wanted to play uh, you know that was that was a big thing because I was just sitting at home doing nothing and I wanted to learn the métier of the business if you will and and somehow I uh, I was asked to become a development executive and I learned a lot, that was about 10 years ago maybe. And I learned a lot how the business works. And it was such a great, great experience for me because actors tend to take things personally. And then you find out, oh my God, it has nothing, it's got nothing to do with you. And that was like a, a, a learning curve for me because, because you know, I tend to blame myself and the narcissist I am. And it, it's not, it really is not. I mean, there are a lot of other variables and factors that determine what the outcome is. But you know, from development, I started producing and I started being in the editing room and in testing and, and score and the whole shebang, you know, like, so I'm, I'm a full blown creative producer on Uncle Frank on and here and now that it's a lot of work. I would still love to be a gun for hire because that's so much easier and the actors don't know that, but they have it easy, I'm telling you. And, uh, but you know, it has to be the right part, the right material and something I respond to on a, on a creative level because I just don't wanna do just whatever. I just wanna, I wanna give of myself to the project and I would have to respond to the material to, to do that. Yeah. Um, well, it's uh, interesting because a lot of the projects that you've worked on and you and Alan have worked on together, there's sort of these very um, intimate, uh, very, down to earth human stories that often are not what, you know, fill up the multiplexes, but the, the landscape of cinema has changed so much um, with streaming services and all these other places to have films uh, or have TV uh, or long form storytelling. Have you noticed a shift in, in the industry in terms of, is it easier to get these types of more intimate stories made? 
No, it's quite the contrary, actually. And to my dismay, it, I have to say that because I'm so uh, depressed almost because, you know, it's great that there's streaming services. It's great that's, that there's a lot of content. It's fantastic. People get to work and whatnot. And there are a lot of fun projects out there. But to get something on this level that you're talking about seems harder to me. It has gotten to be super hard because everybody's looking for sensation. And I love sensation. There's nothing wrong with sensation, you know, but it just can't be the only thing, you know? I mean, you yeah. can't just have filet mignon every day, right? <laughs> we want other things. So uh, so that's, that's what I sort of regret and bemoan on a daily basis. It seems to be harder to make interesting, meaningful projects come to fruition. It, it, seem, it seems to me, I hope I'm wrong, it seems to be a bit harder. Yeah. Well, um, well then before I let you go, I'll, I'll just ask, when you are looking, since you do act and, and produce, when you are looking towards new projects and new stories, what, what are the stories that you really look uh, and fight for to highlight? I mean, this is going to sound corny, but everything that tells you about the human condition, everything that tells you about people and their strife and their dreams and their failures and and whatever the reasons are, it's it's not just about like you know. I love action movies. I mean, but I would love to be in an action movie. You know, I have no no issues with that. But but it just can't be just about that. I mean, it could be funny, it could be drama, it doesn't matter, but it has to be about something to me. And it has to be something I respond to, right? I, 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 have, I have to feel that thing in my soul to be able to sort of be in that project, obviously, because otherwise I'm just like sort of doing it for, for, for whatever reason other than that. And that reason I think is, is more important, you know? Mm -hmm. Well, I mean, that's my dream. I know like the bar is too high and maybe whatever, but I just, that's, that's what I would love. Oh, the bar is never too high. Well, we'll <laughs> <laughs> I can't wait to continue to see you and see you reach that bar. Um, thank so you. thank you, Peter, for joining me. Everyone who's out there watching, make sure you subscribe to Gold Derby. Keep up to date with us throughout the season. Thank you, Peter. Okay, you bet. All right. Thank you so much.